Hey, I'm Mac. Welcome back to my channel. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and consider joining my Patreon for access to new videos 12 to 24 hours early as well as some Patreon exclusive content. Uh, quick disclaimer, there's a lot of wind in Utah tonight and there has been all week with winter storms. <laughs> You're going to hear some of it. You're just going to have to deal with it, okay? If I have to deal with it, so do you. Because <sighs> I live in the windiest place in this whole area. <laughs> Point of the mouth. So this was a submission that was sent in on Instagram. And it is a, I, I guess it's a Christian centered MLM. And I just find that fascinating. I went through a weird phase where I was going to church for a while back when I was in high school. Uh, it was a Pentecostal church. Those are very, it's very addictive in a way. But, but then what happened was... It excites me, Daddy. Don't you see? I like it when the men look at me. You try to keep me trapped here in this small town like a little animal. But I am busting out, Daddy. I'm gonna see the world, and the world is gonna see me. They're gonna see all of me, Daddy. I mean, basically, that's what happened. I'm not going to intentionally say anything offensive, but if I do, just remember that you'll be in heaven and I'll be damned to hell eternally. So it's probably gonna, you know, it's all gonna come out in the wash, okay? So just relax. <laughs> all right, let's go. I know a lot of y'all know Rob on here and he's a goofball. You know, we are both over the age of 40. We'll just leave it there. But, you know, we try real hard not to act that, you know, that way. So we just try to have a lot of fun because we know that, you know, health and fitness is not always a fun topic. And you do have to talk about some weird and uncomfortable things when it comes to your health, um, because if those things aren't working right, then nothing works right. And so Rob obviously has a fun way of talking about things, making it less inappropriate than I seem to have learned how to make it. Uh, so I know sometimes. Yeah, so I haven't seen this yet, but we're off to a great start. <laughs> Um, but anyways, y'all grab a pen and paper. I'm telling you, you're going to want to, you know, write things down. Here's the thing. I see. I'm so fucking prepared. Thing I will tell you, if you're on here and you're building a business with Ravenly, please know that you don't have to repeat any of this when you're talking to people. I want to make sure to say that. Bravenly. Bravenly. Wow. It, it certainly has all the parts of an English word, and yet is definitely not a word. <laughs> Bravenly. It's kind of like Cravenly with a B. Also, if, I, if I'm not supposed to repeat any of this, why are you saying it in the first place? Um, we just want to do these, you know, periodically to let you understand the power of these products, the power of this company. Um, but you don't have to repeat this. It's just good stuff and good wisdom for you to like, having your little arsenal in the back of your head. Um, but Rob is going to talk to you. I love what Rob has said to me before or in Deshaun, you know, that um, he would go all nutrition nerd on people and explain a product, and explain what it does for people. And they would like blaze over. And then Sean would walk in and be like, good, it works for me. It's going to work for you. And he'd be like, okay, sign me up. I'll buy it. And it would frustrate Rob because he's like, oh my gosh, you know, I just spent all this time. But again, people just want to hear that it works, right? When you're, when you're you know, talking to people and trying to get them on products. However, it's very good for you to know the, the back end stuff. And that's what I asked Rob to jump on here. You know, he is a part of Ravenly. He's, you know, full-time pastor, full-time dad, full-time husband. Um, and, you know, he's going to help us out on the nutrition side of things and just getting the word out and um, helping everybody explain these products. So what exactly is a part-time husband then? If, if we're if we're specifying that he's a full time husband, I mean, that's the case for anything. If if you just are dumping a bunch of information on someone that they were not warned was coming or that they have not expressed any interest in hearing, if you're just randomly coming up to them and then spewing a bunch of stuff, they're not going to really be super interested, probably. That's not just because it's nutrition nerd. That's just, that's the case for anything. People don't usually like long, unsolicited, unprompted, un introduced 
spiels. Um, again, grab pen and paper. I've got this recorded. I can send it to you when we're done. Rob, I'm going to let you take it away. And when we're done, if Rob has time, we can answer questions. Sean and I will clearly stay on and answer as many questions as we can as well. So Rob, take it away. Awesome, guys. I'm so excited to be with you guys and to, to just chat. Um, I do I, I do nerd out with nutrition. It's just, it's a funny thing. I got into nutrition while I was in ministry school. Um, I worked for a nutritionist part time while I was in. Okay, he's on the DL, right? In school, and and I just I was so fascinated and so blown away by it that I just kept learning. I kept down that um, down that vein, and just on my own for no reason, I went through a schooling and got a national certification in nutritional counseling. And, and I don't even need to look that up to know that that is a load of hot garbage. Yikes! Yeah, what is that? And then I went beyond that to uh, to joining the American Botanical Council uh, as a herbal specialist. Um, ju for no Jesus, God Almighty, literally. I've never even heard of these organizations. And guess what? I don't need to look them up. For reason, like it wasn't a part of my job. I, I, I was a pastor. Uh, that's what I went to school for. Um, but it just, I was, I was just fascinated by it. I really was. And how the body worked and how the body responded to natural um, ingredients and and just how how God created the planet to feed us and to nurture us and uh, in such a unique way and, and then gifted people to be able to figure out how the extracts of these plants and and things uh, work in our bodies and in and, and optimal. OK, yeah. But like if based on what you just said there, I mean, didn't he also create strychnine and I don't know, malaria? And if he if and if he designed it to like nourish humanity, how come so many people like people die of starvation every single day? So it seems like maybe he didn't do a very good job at that or something. I don't know. It, it just it just appears that it's not super well suited to feeding us. I mean, it, it does a good job for most of us and it does certainly a better job than most other planets. But I mean, that's the reason that we evolved here because there is food growing here. That it's kind of like saying that your 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 gloves, you know that your hands were designed because they just fit so perfectly into our gloves. Like you have it, you just have it backwards. I think that that example is from a, a talk by Julia Sweeney because I didn't make that up. I, I don't know. I, I just would think that if an all powerful God is is creating something with the goal of making it super suitable for feeding us, I would think that nobody should be starving, right? I would think that his his design for it would be perfect, uh, but it's not. And also he made it very difficult for us to distinguish some types of poisons from things that aren't poisonous. A lot of your ancestors gave their lives performing some trial and error on that shit. And it's only through the uh, absolute wizardry that is language and especially written language that we didn't have to keep trial and erroring a lot of that stuff. So um, anyways, there, feel free to throw questions in the chat and, and you know, Sean Alley, myself, I have it open. So if I see it and I can answer it, please, I'm happy to as best as I can. And if I don't know, I'll tell you, I won't make it up, I promise. Um, yeah, unlike your sermons. <laughs> But so, yeah, that's how I got into nutrition. And and that was in the early er, uh, beginning of 2000 uh, when when all that was going on. And and um, and so then I, what are you talking about? What was going on in 2000? Direct sales came into my, my life uh, in 2010 and was able to 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 build a successful business in, in that world. Um, and and like Ali said, the the knowing, you know, for being a pastor, he's not a great speaker nutrition side it did me less good on the helping people and and reaching people as much as just my story did um because you can say a lot of facts you can say a lot of information but it, it's it's the story it's it's how you make someone feel it's the emotion okay can i'm not i'm not convinced that you can say any facts because you haven't said any yet uh, connection that makes somebody interested to want to try. It's probably what made you interested to want to try. It's the same with other people. So this information that I'll give 
Um, a lot of it's going to be just helpful for you and your belief in the products so that when you are sharing it and talking with somebody, you'll feel more comfortable about it. You'll feel. Oh, OK. So what we're doing here is we're making sure that you believe in the product enough, because if you don't, then it obviously won't work. If it doesn't work, it's because you didn't have enough faith. Right. Right. So I guess it's at least internally consistent logic here. Feel more. Um empowered and and more uh, locked in uh, to being able to um, uh, uh, speak with confidence about these products. Because I know sometimes you're like, well, I know it makes me feel good, but what if it doesn't work for somebody else? And as to where, of course, that's possible, you know, for a variety of reasons. Uh, but the reality is uh, the, the the years of experience and the years of, of research on uh, these ingredients, uh, they just, they tell a different story. So um, I, I'm going to jump into what what do you, i'm so what 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 was the the first story and then what is the different story four products that i really want to go over um it just an amazing product line and, and setup and i had a lot of fun digging into the the back of the label um that, that's always me anytime somebody like says hey what do you think of this product uh, you know i look at the back of the label and wow i mean good for you um the fact that he thinks it is special that he looks at the back of a supplement of unknown content before putting it into his body. He thinks that that is special about him, that other people are just like, what's in this? I don't know. Let me just let me just uh, take some of it, though. Probably a bad idea. And I look at how it was put together and I tell you with Bravenly products, they're just put together with excellence. And so anyways, I want to start with... Um, I want to smell it bigger. I'll start with. I hope his sermons aren't like this. I'll start with balance. I had. I was gonna like do this whole order thing, but I want to start with balance mainly because it's the biggest. It's like your everything. They're like, oh, let's see, uh, kitchen sink. We'll throw that in there too. And uh, yeah, what else? It really is. It's a nine in one, like the, the way it's kind of advertised on the website is a, a nine in one, everything kind of a product. Uh, but it's true. It really is. Um, and so you're the first thing about it is it has a, um, a whole food prebiotic blend. So like wheatgrass and uh, and uh, inulin. So inulin is a fiber and, and it's a prebiotic. And so you have these prebiotics uh, and we all know probiotics, but prebiotics are kind of like what um, uh, a picture probiotics like on a chariot getting pulled by horses. The prebiotics are the horses. So I don't know if that works for you. <laughs> there you go. But the prebiotics kind of like prepare the way and they they help the probiotics get where they need to go to to. That was a terrible explanation. And honestly, he was very close to to having the correct explanation. So it's more of the uh, a probiotic is the horse. And the prebiotic is oats. So a probiotic is going to be uh, live bacteria or live yeast cells. And they're going to usually be in a spore form because when they're in spore form, that means that they are protecting themselves so that they are more durable, which means that they can stay alive on, for example, a shelf in a store. And then when you take it, uh, it hopefully will replenish and sort of restore the flora in your gut. The idea behind a prebiotic is that the sort of fibers and other things that you can't digest, usually dietary fiber means something that is food, but that cannot be directly digested by your digestive system, but rather it usually gets digested by microbes in the gut. Meaning that since you're not digesting it, it provides a little bit of a food source to the gut flora. And so that's the whole idea with a prebiotic. You're trying to create an environment that has what the microbes that make up your gut flora are going to need in terms of nutrients and in terms of energy. I'm, I'm still not convinced about any beneficial effects of prebiotics. Probiotics have been proven to be beneficial, especially if you've just finished a, a course of antibiotics. It, it can be very, very, very beneficial to have a probiotic. But what's important with a probiotic is you really want to select a um, 
a very trustworthy, reputable brand for a probiotic because these organisms that are in there, they need to still be alive. So if it's some brand that you've never heard of, it's kind of having a pretty high bar there for a brand that you've never heard of to clear that that these organisms need to still be alive for them to be of any benefit to you. So I always recommend going with a just a trusted brand that has been around for a long time and that has been verified. Just spend the extra and, and get the brand. Um, usually I recommend Flora Store or Culturel. I think that Flora Store is the best one in my opinion. I, I feel like it has the best evidence behind it and it has really proven to be a very consistently performing probiotic. So there's, there's that. Flora Store should give me money, but they don't. help with your uh, intestinal gut um, health. And right, as opposed to your other gut. And uh, with your the flora, you'll hear that word sometimes in your intestines. Basically, it's, it's, it's keeping your bacteria in balance. So we get loaded down with bacteria from daily toxins, foods, all kinds of stuff. And so your probiotics, your good bacteria, they create, they keep that balance in your body. So you don't get overwhelmed with the, the bad, bio, uh, the, the bad um, bacterias. Um, sort of, yeah, I, I, kind of. It's true that in a lot of places on your body, the good bacteria are a, are a key reason that you don't get infected by, by more harmful pathogenic bacteria because it's all going to be, it's all competition. The, the bacteria that are either beneficial or not harmful to you that live on your skin that live just everywhere all over you they're not gonna they're not gonna let a pathogenic bacteria come in there without a fight they're gonna be like no uh i found this human it's mine you can't have it i these are my resources so they're gonna crowd you know they're gonna crowd out any invaders which is uh part of why it can be very disruptive and it can be it can really open the door to new infections when you've been on a course of antibiotics, especially if you're already immunocompromised or if you're on immunosuppressants, because then you if you don't have your good bacteria defending you, and then you also don't have um, the strongest immune system to defend against any invaders that might uh, make their way through. It, for example, okay, MRSA. Everyone knows MRSA, right? Methicillin-resistant re Staph aureus. It's resistant to basically all antibiotics, except for, in most cases, vancomycin. Although there's also uh, ones that are that are resistant to vancomycin. Anyway, the point is like MRSA is not a particularly it's not a particularly virulent or particularly infectious or contagious strain of bacteria. It's actually a little bit less. It's a little bit less good at its job than the wild type bacteria. It's not the fact that it is very adept at getting through your defenses or anything. It's it's actually quite bad at it. I could have MRSA all over me and it's not going to infect me because my immune system's functioning pretty good right now. And I, I don't have any other health conditions going on that would affect that. It's, it's not the fact that it's more infectious or anything. It's just the fact that it tends to find its way to people who are either immunocompromised, who have been through a lot of antibiotics, who are in the hospital for some reason frequently, then it's kind of an opportunistic thing where it breaks through. And then the reason that it's sort of notable is just the fact that it's very difficult to find a way to treat it because it is resistant to so many things. But it's not that it is some super powered bacteria. It's if the normal uh, beneficial flora that you would normally have have been killed off or have been disrupted in some way. Meaning now if a couple a uh, couple cells of MRSA come along, they're like, oh, there's no one here. Let's let's set up camp. Whereas normally there would just be nowhere for them to to set up their little tent. There because it's already full of uh, the bacteria that already live there and they're they're not going to go down without a fight. Compared to the wild type Staph aureus, MRSA is actually rather 
uh, sickly and weak. So it's going to get its ass kicked by the wild type staff Aureus. I hope that makes sense. And I hope that was interesting. But those other whole foods like the barley grass and alfalfa and spirulina and spinach and chlorella, those are like little scrub brushes that go through your body to detox. It's primarily like your blood. And, and all those red blood cells, it just helps your body detox and get up. So you're going to, you actually get a little bit of energy from that, especially right up front because your body's getting rid of a ton of toxins. Um, uh. I'm sorry. Is he actually suggesting that the grasses that you eat or that you take in this little supplement are, are scrubbing out your blood? I, I can't even really respond to that because that was so nonsensical. No, the point is that those those things are very fibrous and they're not really digestible directly by your digestive enzymes. So that means they will be able to pass through to the large intestines and feed the bacteria that are there because the bacteria that are there are beneficial. That's the whole idea with it. It has nothing to do with scrubbing your blood of toxins. What toxins? How many toxins are you ingesting all the time? You already have a detoxification system. It's called your liver. It's very good at it. You, 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 don't, need, you don't need barley grass to scrub out your blood vessels with and you're cleansing from that. So uh, anyways, that that's one. <laughs> There's eight others just in that. Um, I'm not going to spend as much time, but that's important to know the cleansing and um, and especially the bacterial balance that that uh, that, Brave, that uh, Bravenly Balance creates for us. Um, the antioxidants, uh, it's got a, a big blend of antioxidants, pomegranate, acai, um, uh, moringa, uh, uh, beetroot, raspberry, rose hips, pineapple, goji berry, goji berry, most potent antioxidant uh, fruit in the world. Uh, the acai berry, you've heard of it, it's gotten really cool and hip. Um, it's got a thousand times more of big word anthocyanins. It's what makes it, it gives it its red color. Like what It's pronounced anthocyanin. Antioxidants are not some magical, mystical thing. There's a very specific thing that antioxidants do and it is a function that your body only needs to have performed in very limited quantities. Antioxidants can include vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E. As you've probably heard, because it's a very popular, for whatever reason, story in pop culture that you get these reactive oxygen species or free radicals in your body and the antioxidants neutralize them and supposedly stop them from harming your cells, etc. Because these free radicals, they're just super, they're just the ultimate demon molecule or whatever, and it's totally going to kill you. Well, not really, okay? <laughs> in fact... A lot of cell signaling, especially immune signaling, is done using uh, free radicals and reactive oxygen species. And your cells already have molecules present that can absorb or neutralize those free radicals when you're done with them when the signal is complete. But the point is, is that it's not a purely harmful type of molecule. It's also involved in signaling, particularly immune signaling, which is believed to be one of the reasons why the evidence on antioxidant supplementation so far, there's no evidence that it provides any sort of benefit or health improvement of any kind whatsoever. However, it has been shown that vitamin A and vitamin E being taken in excessive amounts has been shown to increase risk of cancer. And in some very, very large studies, so we're talking some pretty solid evidence here. It does appear that regularly taking 
antioxidant supplements at high doses uh, increases risk of cancer and found to increase all-cause mortality in the uh, study subjects. And some of these studies had a sample size of over 200,000. Fairly strong piece of evidence about that. And, and, and it's and like I, and it's pretty easy to understand why. Frequently, the way that a cancer will develop is when the immune system fails to detect and destroy one of your cells that has mutated to become immortal. And so if you are disrupting the signaling of the immune system by taking these massive doses of antioxidants, well, that's going to hamper its ability, possibly, to find any rogue immortal cells and destroy them. And it's a very slight increase, but it's a very real increase in mortality. It's super annoying. It's super annoying. Um... Also, vitamin C, which is one of the antioxidants, is a great example of why uh, this is, you know, God's whole plan for feeding us is pretty weird, uh, given that almost all animals can synthesize vitamin C in their bodies. And we have the gene that would produce the enzyme that enables the synthesis of vitamin C. It, we have it, but it's broken. Way long ago, one of the ancestors of the um, species that would eventually lead to uh, the human lineage, there was a deletion that led to the gene effectively um, pressing enter or hitting send before it had finished the message, which is called a nonsense mutation, it it prematurely terminates the um, the instructions for synthesizing the protein. It it doesn't work, and so humans, if they don't get uh, vitamin C in their diet, get scurvy. Whereas basically most animals, other than I think some kinds of bats and guinea pigs and i know that chimps and i believe apes also have a have that broken version of the gene to code the enzyme so i don't know i like why did god put the put the gene in there but broken i mean if he didn't want us to be able to make vitamin c why did he put the broken one in there why didn't he just leave the whole thing out is that supposed to be like trolling us? Big word, anthocyanins. It's what makes it, it gives it its red color, like what blueberries have and all of that. It's got a thousand times more of those in the acai berry. And what that does is helps with um, eyesight and vision as well as other um, antioxidant properties. Antioxidants, real quick, it just, it helps your, um, antioxidants helps your body um, uh, uh, stay in a healthy place. So uh, oxidizing, oxidizing cells means they're dying and antioxidants. No, it doesn't. It's not good for your cells to be prevented from dying necessarily. Generally, you want cells to be turned over on the regular See, if your cells are prevented from dying, that's called cancer. This helps present, prevent cells from dying. So that's kind of the, um, the reason why we take these antioxidants. But then it has uh, another blend of maca root and rhodiola and ashwagandha and bacopa. These are anti-stress. Uh, it's an anti-stress blend is how they label it. They're adaptogens. Okay, like I've said many, many times already, um, adaptogen is an utterly... It is such a vague term that it is utterly meaningless because what what do you mean adapt it promote what they say about adaptogens is that it promotes your body's ability to adapt what do you mean and in fact uh adaptogen is a prohibited claim in the european union for one thing uh and I tend to trust their judgment on a lot of things, 
because and it's a prohibited claim because it is it's way too vague. You should be attempting to prove and demonstrate a more specific claim than adaptogen because that could mean literally anything. And for most of those anti-stress herbs, there's no evidence for those. There's some evidence for ashwagandha, but again, you don't you're taking so many things at once with this that it would be impossible to know where any perceived benefit would even be coming from if it's not just placebo. It's if if any of these herbal things actually do something, then they're going to have side effects because anything that has regular effects is going to have side effects at least for some of the individuals who try it. That's just the way it is. It might not have side effects for most of the people who try it, but for some people it will. And if there's never any side effects for any people, then it probably doesn't have any effects at all. They're herbs that are grown in very harsh environments like Russia and like these really harsh environment places. And, uh, and because they survive and thrive in those environments, when we ingest them and take them, they help our bodies adapt to harsh environments. I know that's weird and, and wild that that's how it works, but it's... Yeah, that is weird and wild. You know, Russia is a pretty big country, right? It's not, it's not all Siberia. It, what do you, I mean, so what? So if they take something, if, if, if Russian people use something, then we should all use it because by that logic, we should all be dying of alcohol poisoning. That's not meant to be like a rude joke about Russians. There really is a huge problem with alcohol abuse in Russia, and it's actually very sad. It's a counter argument to if something is taken in Russia, then we should all take it. That's all. But that's that's the way it does it. It helps our bodies. Um, uh, so any, uh, uh, with inflammation and with, again, environmental stuff, it helps your body to uh, to do well in those environments. And a lot of times that will. Oh, OK. So just in case you guys uh, missed that, he clarified that um, it helps with, you know, inflammation and environmental stuff in those environments. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? Uh, why don't you give me some of that supplement so that I can put it in my body? Can you imagine if Pfizer came out with a medication and they were in, in, in the indication was, you know, environmental stuff in harsh environments just helps with inflammation and environmental stuff. Right. Because when things actually do something, we expect there to be a bit of, a bit more specificity about what exactly it's doing. Also, you know where you can get pomegranate from? A pomegranate. Okay, pomegranates, it's uh it's November. Pomegranates are in season right now, so it's a great time to have a fresh pomegranate. Or any of those, you know, any of those fruits sounded pretty good to me, but pomegranates are especially tasty and they are just coming in to season. So yum. Sure beats drinking juice. Don't, don't drink fruit juice, okay? Eat fruit, don't drink it. You've removed so many of the properties that make fruit a good thing to eat when you are turning it into juice. Don't drink fruit juice. It is, it's, it's just as bad pretty much as sugary soda. That it's, it's really that bad. Uh, eat your fruit, don't drink it. Thank you. End up helping like with stress levels. Um, then it goes into having a full fiber blend. Uh, you get two grams of fiber uh, in a serving. Um, so uh, from, from great sources. Um, it has a metabolism blend, uh, green coffee bean, uh, white tea, matcha tea, black. Wow, we're just going at light speed now. 
okay, here's the thing with fiber supplements. They can be kind of beneficial, but the vast majority of the benefits that have been attributed to dietary fiber do not come from fiber supplements. It only comes from consuming foods as whole foods that have a lot of fiber in them as part of the whole food. I, I, I You don't need all these supplements. You just need to eat um, more whole foods. You want to eat more things that don't have a nutrition facts label, okay? It's, it's good to have good numbers on the on the nutrition facts label, but even better is a food that doesn't have a nutrition facts label, like a pomegranate. Tea, yerba mate tea, all of these are, are, are tea leaves. They're all tea leaves, so it's a very clean energy. Um, nothing that's gonna make you go crazy, uh, but it's a, nat it's a really easy um, uh, way to, to get your metabolism to raise a little bit so that, uh, again, all of this is functioning better and you get to see that uh, extra benefit. Um, it has another ingredient. Oh, you know what though? Um, I have this crazy idea that you might be able to get some sort of um, tea-related energy by so, someone told me I heard this that you could I heard that you could put um, those tea leaves if you if you put it in you know perhaps a, a little uh, like a little pouch that the water can get through and you put it into boiling water. I heard that you can do that for a few minutes and then um, and then you just take that take that out of the out of the boiling water. I heard that you can then drink that water um, and and you will also get energy from that. And I also heard that it tastes better that way too. It, I, don't, I don't know. I'm, they, they call that beverage tea. And I'm starting to think that maybe that's why the tea leaves are called that. Like maybe it's called tea leaves because it makes tea when you do that. Like, why are we taking a tea pill instead of just drinking tea or coffee? It, it's it's so stupid. Ingredient called Geminia Silvestria. We'll talk about that later in a different product, uh, but it's in here as well. All right, immune support, echinacea. Most everybody's familiar with echinacea. Echinacea doesn't do anything. It's never been proven to have any benefit whatsoever. But astragalus and uh, reishi, which is a mushroom, uh, again, it, it's helped. Doesn't do anything. Helps your body um, fight off foreign invaders. No, it doesn't. Um, again, none of this stuff will just do it all on, on your own. So like on medication and all that, you still need to do all the things your doctor recommends. What's great about Brave, uh, about a balance is you're getting all of these natural foods, all these natural ingredients in your system that just helps. It, bring, it comes alongside of you and helps you in this uh, fight for good health. Um, and, and especially... Okay, if any of those things actually had effects, I would be very concerned about how many of these things then that you are taking at once. Especially now, you know, there's summer flu and summer cold and summer whatever going through, um, have, boosting your immune. Summer flu? Summer cold, that's always been a thing. I actually, I've gotten like two colds ever in my life and they were both during summer. The system is so, so important. Uh, and then it just has another uh, veggie blend that's a part of it uh, with tomatoes and, and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts. And I, again, I could go into all the details about that. Why are we doing this instead of eating tomatoes, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts? That sounds a lot more delicious than a stupid supplement. And And I know that produce is not something that everybody can access because of either being in a food desert or affordability. But I guarantee you that produce is gonna be more affordable than this fucking supplement. This stuff, uh, but what's important to know is it's just also providing your vitamins and minerals uh, in, in all of that as well. Um, and then it also has- which, is, which the produce would also do and it would be cheaper and tastier. And, and you would have a lot of other uh, health benefits from eating more vegetables and less junk food and shit. 
but okay, fine. Why don't you just do this fucking little supplement then? Stupid. And don't tell me that you don't like eating vegetables. You're an adult. Stop it. Uh, uh, dude, I'm still the first product. There's so much in this product. It's ridiculous. Like, I feel like I've been talking forever and I'm still like on my first page. I absolutely 100% agree. It is ridiculous how much you have in this first product. And it's the same stinking product. So it's it's silly that not everybody is on on this product. It really is a, a everything product that is going to help your body feel so good. Um, it's going to help you uh, just deal. And, and again, it may how does the number of things that are in it lead to the conclusion that it would be beneficial for everyone or anyone? Uh, what, like, how does the number of ingredients relate to its beneficiality exactly i didn't i didn't quite understand that leap that we made there you would think that your health insurance company would be promoting it to you so that they would they would not have to pay for you potentially going to the hospital with it with with that with that pesky summer flu if it worked because then that because it would be cheaper for them to get you to take this than it would be for you to go to the hospital. So they'd want you to take it. Why not? So why? Why are they just throwing their money away, letting you get sick? And when clearly they could, you know, be preventing it by by getting getting you some of uh, this supplement. Why? I, have, have have we have we talked to uh have we talked to uh CVS Caremark to let them know they could they could probably save a lot of money maybe you're on here and you're like why do I even take supplements what's even the point of supplements or you'll talk to somebody supplements are here to fill in the nutritional I 100% agree but the point of supplements is for the supplement company to make money. So, and I don't need a supplement to help me deal. If you need a supplement or whatever to help you deal, then you need to kind of look at uh, where, you know, maybe you should consider like a professional that you could talk to or something because it's not, it's just not good for your solution to helping you deal be a sub being a a substance even if it's if even if it's a harmless supplement it's not a good thing it's not a good pattern to be establishing you know it's, it, it's kind of weird it's just not not a good pattern not a good habit gaps that we don't get from our everyday diet. Now, if you can tell me, well, Rob, I uh, take pomegranate, acai, uh, meringue. Okay, so what you should be doing then is, if at all possible, you should be aiming to fill in those gaps with real food by changing that diet. No, a supplement, no matter what, no matter what supplement they come out with, it will never give you even a tenth of the benefit that it would give you to to change your diet to fill in those nutritional gaps that's that's just the way it is and there's no way around it a carrot uh raspberry maca root rhodiola bacopa ashwagandha flaxseed apple pectin you know if you can say like i do that every day anyways then like just, I just eat it all day long, then fine, don't buy the product. I had a pomegranate today and it was delicious. It was absolutely delicious. And I guarantee you, uh, it was way better than this supplement. And it was so much tastier. It was very enjoyable, I really enjoyed it. Had a lot of fiber with it. My That pomegranate probably had more fiber in it than this fiber supplement also. So I'm just, you know, really beating the shit out of this supplement with one piece of fruit. 
had those anthocyanins in there too. I mean, really kicking ass and taking names. I'm just saying. And it was delicious. But I'm telling you, for the rest of us that don't do that, this is such an easy scoop to get all of this good stuff in. Okay, yeah, see, nutrition does not come in a scoop. Anyways, back to it. Um, it has a detox blend of milk thistle, which is a, good for your liver, a detox in your liver. Your liver just holds all the toxins in. No, it doesn't. Your liver does not hold the toxins in. Your liver performs enzymatic chemical reactions on the toxins so as to make them not toxins anymore so that they can then be eliminated your liver your liver is not like filling up with toxins it's not like it's not like it's a sponge and so by detoxing getting all of that out it really helps to uh, move all of that and then it's got a uh, five billion probiotics in there as well uh, which again is a fantastic way to get all of that um, uh, Okay, so that's referring to the number of cells of the microbe that's in there and five billion of a microbe is not really that many of it. And that's that's generally where a probiotic is going to start. That's going to be about this, the lowest number of cells that it's going to have for a probiotic because you know, they're kind of itty bitty. Those, those little uh, bacteria or yeasts, they're, they're, they're itty bitty. They're so small you can't see them. For comparison, the average human is estimated to have about 39 trillion uh, bacterial cells present. You have about 30 trillion human cells. Of your good bacteria. Uh, uh, it has a digestive aid blend. So your protease, amylase, li lipase, lactase, all of those cellulase, all of those are big um, or just, you know, descriptors of different types of enzymes that break down different things. Yeah, I, I actually have those uh, in my digestive tract already. Fats, carbohydrates, proteins, all that good stuff. All right. That's it. <laughs> okay. All right. Everybody take a breath. Everybody drink something. Uh, uh, rehydrate yourselves. Uh, because, I mean, that was just in balance. And that's such a perfect name for it. Because for me, that mindset of all of this stuff is just to, to help you and your body get into a natural place of balance. Yeah. You really need to get a natural balance by... Uh, consuming this synthetic product that you scoop into something uh, in your health and your wellness. Um, it may not like rock the scale. It may not, you know, grow muscles, you know, or whatever, you, you know, it may not do all of those things. It may not do anything at all for you overnight for you, you know, it, 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 knowing some of this, it'll help for sure. But what it'll do is it'll start you in a reset and getting you on a firm foundation to really start building your health and wellness uh, the way you want it, you know, the way you want to feel. And after a month of being on the product, you're going to really like when you wake up, it's going to be different. Like you'll literally be able, I would almost tell you, if you haven't taken this product yet, kind of journal how you feel for a couple of days when you wake up during the day, or before you go to bed, like how you feel um, energy wise, how you feel, uh, uh, you know, how your body feels like with aches, um, you know, did you get sleepy? When did you get hungry? All that kind of stuff. And then take it, the take break, take a, a balance for uh, for a month, and then go back and look at that journal, and you will see such a dramatic difference um, in, in in a lot of those areas, if not all of them. Um, what a load of crap! See, this is why when we test things, it's supposed to be double blinded because you're going to be biased towards wanting this thing to work because if it works then that means that you are going to feel better than you currently feel. Therefore, you want it to be true that it's working since you're taking it, right? And you paid a lot of money for it, right? Right. So you're going to be biased toward tilting that subjective description 
to be more negative at the beginning and more positive at the end. Especially because now you're thinking about it. I mean, it's just a load of crap. It's all, it's so wishy-washy. He couldn't, he couldn't even give one concrete quantifiable thing that we'll be able to see. Not one. It's all this wish, it's, you know, it's just going to help you. It's going to make you feel better. Feel better how? That could mean basically anything. Because of, of again, remember what I said at the beginning, just filling in those n- nutritional gaps and connecting uh, all of those uh, puzzle pieces to feeling a lot better. Um, okay, let's move on. Uh, I want to talk about burn real quick because burn is a really awesome product. Um, it's it's not just your typical uh, fat burner, weight loss, you know, type of a deal. Um, it, it really is a uh, it really is a um, a more complex version. So I'm just going to talk about a very a few of the ingredients. Again, this is to help you feel confident about what you're taking. Um, you know, you need to match it with all the other stuff, the diet, the exercise, the, the water intake guys we're talking about whole foods and, and herbs, water. You could do all those things, eat more whole foods, fruits and vegetables, more produce, more natural stuff and get, get some more exercise. And guess what? You don't even need to do this supplement then. It's a waste of effort. It's a waste of money. When you could you could just do the exercise, you could just do the eating more whole foods and less processed foods. And that that's that would just blow away any potential benefit from this crap. And guess what? You'll have more money too. Here's what lets it grow, okay? Think about it being in the ground. Well, it's in your body. It's gotta have water to make it grow. Drink water, y'all. Drink, drink, drink water. Um, okay, so burn. Um, uh, it has it has a, it has a, 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 it's just a cool blend of stuff. Are you all right, sir? To help with um, uh, uh, your blood sugar and blood sugar management as well as um, hunger and as well as of course metabolism so uh white mulberry how many times you ever get to talk about white mulberry in a day right uh (laughs) white mulberry uh vanadium alpha lipoic acid um uh gemenia sylvestria remember that fun word that's also in the other one so all of those help with your sugar cravings blood sugar levels help helping your body to to create balance helping your body in uh insulin uh uh, production and management um obviously if you have uh medical issues in any of that you you have to check with your doctor before you start some of this stuff because it could you know change different you know what would really help with blood sugar management would be eating more whole foods cutting out added sugar and eating fewer processed foods also what what massively 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 helps with insulin resistance and with um with blood sugar is exercise because when you engage in exercise that's causing your cells to use more energy which means that more sugar is being taken out of circulation and as you sort of get the cells practicing that sugar metabolism, they get better at it. They get more efficient at it. it it's it, it's a massive benefit in blood sugar control to do more exercise. Again, I would not focus on weight loss as a goal of exercise because you will probably be disappointed by it because it, it's not likely to have a massive effect on weight. So you know, it's fine. It's not, that's not the most important thing. Anyway, the most important thing is if you are having blood sugar problems is getting that under control and, um, and either lessening insulin resistance or preventing insulin resistance from getting worse. That's what will, uh, help you live longer and help you live healthier. And exercise is extremely beneficial for, um, for lessening insulin resistance or preventing it and for bringing blood sugar under control. That's a good reason to exercise. And that's, 
that will do so much more for you than all of the crap that he's listing in here. You you just have to decide to find an activity that you enjoy doing. I mean, you know, do you enjoy dancing? Do you uh, maybe maybe running is the thing for you? But if running is the thing for you, it's probably something you've already thought of. So um but there's, there's more activities than that. Maybe it's paddle boarding. Maybe it's, you know, there's so many things that you can, that you can do that will, that are exercise. And there's, there's, there's bound to be something that you, that you will actually enjoy rather than trying to just do the same activity that, that everybody tries doing. Because if you're miserable doing it and it's just, and it's not something that you feel like you can keep doing, then that's not going to be the activity for you. It needs to be something that you can do on a regular basis, and it's not going to be just an absolute struggle to get started every time. So think about that. Um, but just for, for the general population of us that we know we take we eat too much sugar, this will help with sugar cravings. It will help with your body's management of sugar and it'll help with insulin production when you do take in sugar. Reason that's important is because we all know the sugar crash, right? So not craving sugar and then when you- So the more common problem is not insulin production. If you're having a problem in your production of insulin, that either means you are, you, there's probably type one diabetes there, which is an autoimmune condition, or it could be very progressed type two diabetes. In the early stages of, of type two diabetes or in pre-diabetes, the problem isn't your ability to produce insulin. The problem is that cells are becoming resistant to insulin. So those are two very different things. You get a bunch in being able to manage what just came in to, to keeping you at a good place. Energy wise is awesome. Um, it's got a cool product called Google. I just want to add another thing in here since we're talking about sugar cravings. It's it's very important to recognize that sugar is it is addictive. Sugar is able to trigger a reward pathway in your brain in a way that basically no other nu- macronutrient or type of food is able to. Sugar is uniquely able to trigger the reward pathway. So if you're having sugar cravings, really the only way you're going to be able to get rid of those sugar cravings is to eat less sugar. To, to try to recalibrate your tastes because it's very addictive. If you're if you're having sugar cravings, then you then you really 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 need to reduce your consumption of added sugar. Sorry. Yep, Google. It's a resin. Uh, you, you, we know it better from uh, myrrh, the tr- the plant where we get myrrh. Um, uh, you know, frankincense and myrrh, not the cat myrrh alley. I know. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Inside joke that just we shouldn't be done on Zoom. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my God. I can't stop. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it's a resin. Uh, it helps with your app. Are there other coca leaves in this or something? What the fuck? What is with this guy? He's he's uh he's uh really uh, feeling the Holy Spirit. It helps with that feeling of um of <laughs> it helps with that feeling of of satisfaction. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And so, like when you eat, you feel full, and you stay that you keep that feeling of full. Um, great, great product. Uh, chromium banana ba, like. Uh, banana is actually kind of cool. It, it was in a product that I won't talk about, but uh, in the early 2000s that, uh, again, it helped you. It helped you stay. Well, if it worked so well, why did the fad just flame out? A feeling full throughout the, the day uh, and not craving sweets. So anyway, some cool products in Brave and Bravely Burn. Um, it has chromium. Again, what, what I love about it is uh, um, it's it's not like looking for caffeine to do all the stuff. Uh, it's using cayenne and it's using chromium uh, to go after the, to, to help with the metabolizing side of things. But then it's using, um, it's using everything else for the, the stuff that we struggle with 
eating too much sugar cravings. It's awesome. I love it. Great product. Great, great product. Okay, moving on. Chromium is an element. It's a transition metal. The regulatory agencies in the US and the European Union actually differ on whether they consider it to be a an essential nutrient. The US says that it is essential. Uh, the European Union does says that it is not. However, it is chromium deficiency is a real condition, but y- you need it in such minute quantities. You estimated that 25 to 35 micrograms of chromium daily is enough and it's contained in a lot of foods. Some pretty large meta-analyses on the use of chromium as a supplement. There were actually four of these large studies that were done on chromium as a supplement and they found that there was no significant impact on A1C, which is a metric used to assess glucose control or blood sugar control, and no significant impact on fasting plasma glucose, which is blood sugar, and no uh, significant impact on weight or any of these other claims. If it's helpful, it's, uh, the effect is apparently so tiny that we are unable to detect. Product, great, great product. Okay, moving on. I did good on that one. Really? Because I thought you did well. All right. Uh, Bravenly Gold uh, is what I want to talk about next. I love this product. Um, uh, it, it's 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 kind of a it, it's kind of like balance in the sense of it's an everything uh, product. Um, turmeric is uh, one of its main ingredients. It gives it that yellow color. Um, you probably taste it. Um, you probably taste it, you know, kind of first thing or smell it for sure. Yeah, we talked about turmeric in, in a couple of videos ago. I'll put a card. You open it up. Um, it, it Turmeric helps with blood. Uh, that was a health claim, sir. And no, it doesn't. Blood sugar, it does some of those things. Um, its main function is uh, it helps with your body's inflammation response. How? What does that mean? And no, it doesn't. Its main function is as a spice. You put it on food for flavor. Response. Um, and which is huge because, uh, like someone like me, I have, I have autoimmune, uh, diseases. And so uh, like, um, management of inflammation is crazy important for vanity reasons. Uh, when we're inflamed, we're puffier. We don't look or feel our best because of it. Um, uh, if you're like me and over 40, uh, you know, uh, and I was an athlete all of my early years, um, uh, my, my joints don't don't like me and try to murder me sometimes. And so having things that help with your body's inflammation is- How do you know it's helping with your inflammation? Huge. Um, Gold uh, also has Garcinia Cambogia in it, which is, I I was so surprised of why that would be in there. I'm surprised at all of these ingredients, why they would be in there. So Garcinia was perhaps most famously associated with the brand name product Hydroxycut. Uh, was also featured on Dr. Oz. So if you needed any evidence that this product doesn't work and is probably harmful, uh, there's the fact that it was featured on Dr. Oz. Um, There's no evidence that it helps with weight loss, uh, although there is evidence that it does cause uh, liver damage. Guess I guess you'll need that detox after all since your liver won't be working as well. Um, but it, it, that's a appetite um, suppressant aid. It helps your body with appetite uh, control. No evidence for that, but there is evidence that it damages your liver, sir. So if you're uh, taking, taking this at a time of day, like, like three o'clock for me, it would be a great time to take this. So, uh, so it kind of carries me through the afternoon. Um, apple cider vinegar, we've, we all, uh, maybe, I don't know, again, uh, uh, I feel like uh, I feel older than than I am when I'm like apple cider vinegar a day, you know, <laughs> because it really is a great uh, product that helps your body um, uh, both in so many different ways. Um, it's it's high acidic, but when it goes into your system, it turns alkaline. So it helps alkalinize your body. That's a huge deal. You don't need to alkalinize your body. Again, inflammation, um, uh, oxidation, all the, all the, well then sir, if you're getting all these amazing benefits from all these 10,000 products that you're taking, why are you not in better? Like, why are you not in a better state of health than sir? I mean, theoretically, shouldn't you basically be perfect right now? 
but yet your joints are trying to murder you. So why is that? What state would you be in if you weren't taking all these things exactly? So I, I don't get it. What gives? Why don't they work? Attacks on our body. Uh, and, and it has, impl- I mean, it just, I, I, would, I would be willing to say just a, a save on time. Google health benefits of of apple cider vinegar. If you really want to go down the down the well of benefits of apple cider vinegar, it's awesome. See, that's your first fucking problem. That's a bad thing to search for because that you're you're already biasing the results that you're gonna get. It would be a better search to do effects of apple cider vinegar or just apple cider vinegar and look for a page that is just a. Pre- pre- presentation of just general information about the product. But if you, of course, if you go, if you can put in health benefits of anything and you'll, I'm sure you'll find a page of purported health benefits of that thing. I mean, of course you're going to find benefits if you put benefits into your search result. Um, uh, it's got uh, maitake mushrooms, real powerful antioxidants, helps with artery health and blood flow, um, uh, immune health, um, cinnamon, which is a huge antioxidant. Also, again, we talked about it earlier uh, for insulin um, uh, production management, as well as it has benefits. Okay, why don't you just have cinnamon then? And cinnamon, cinnamon tastes good. You can use it for a lot of cooking. And those mushrooms, I'm sure that those are quite flavorful and enjoyable. Could probably, you know, make a dish from those. And that's going to be a lot better than this synthetic powder that God knows what else is in it. There could be like lead in it and stuff. I mean, most protein powders are contaminated. So what makes me anyone think this is going to be any better? for um, uh, inflammation uh, as well. So so really, 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 really cool. And then the last thing- <laughs> I called it, I knew he was gonna say that. That's also in there that I wanna talk about is coconut milk powder. At first I was like, clearly that's just to give it its creamy flavor or whatever. But there's so many um, health benefits to the coconut milk. Uh, you know, it does help with bone health and uh, and some with weight loss. But also it helps um, with your body's immune response to bacteria. No. Okay, why don't you just have some coconut milk then? You can get coconut milk at the store or you could eat a coconut. They sell coconuts at the store. And that's gonna taste a lot better than this coconut milk powder. You can have a fresh coconut, yum. I never never knew that, never knew that. It went until I went digging that out. That I- I saw that. So anyways, again, just another. And so theoretically, I would think that if those benefits are in the coconut milk, which coconut milk is like a, you know, coconut flesh that's gone through a food processor with some water, I would think that probably having fresh coconut, which is actually not that expensive, would be even better. Addition to this, helping our bodies um, keep fight off the things that are trying to trying to kill us in, in, in all the ways that they do. Okay. Last product I talked about uh, that I'll talk about is um, uh, Bravenly Rush. Uh, again, because it's, it's awesome. I have to talk about it, right? Um, uh, it real simply put, and I'm going to kind of do this for all of them uh, after this when I go back, but real simply, Bravenly Rush, it'll help you help you with four things. Energy, concentration, focus, and hydration. And uh, energy, concentration, focus, and hydration. Um, and the uh, concentration and focus, I feel like are two separate things. I don't really say they're the same thing. You could if you don't want to remember a fourth thing, but come on, don't be lazy. Uh, energy, concentration, <laughs> focus, and energy. Um, I mean, and hydration. So a couple of ingredients that I want to talk about. First of all, it's got a full span of, of vitamins and minerals. So uh, clearly that's going to help on the, um, the cellular energy side as well as the hydration side. Um, uh, w- one thing about the back. Not if you're not deficient in any of those vitamins or minerals. 
to the label, just this, this little sidebar education, in case you were wondering, um, sometimes where the percentages are, you know, how it'll say like 300 milligrams and that's like a billion percent when it's a, a B vitamin, uh, or here, I'll give you a prime example, B12, it says it's 1,875% B12. That sounds like too much. And, and I've had people, they're like, why so much? That's too much. It's 45 micrograms that gives you 1,875%, 45. That's it, it, micrograms to go back to, to whatever. Um, it takes a thousand micrograms to, to do a, make a, a, a milligram, right? Or a gram or whatever. It's a thousand mics to a milla. 1,000 micrograms is one milligram. 1,000 milligrams is a gram. 1,000 grams is a kilogram. Jesus Christ. Also, while that is harmless in the case of a B vitamin, because you will just urinate out the excess because they're water soluble, that's a really dumb way to arrive at a conclusion that something is safe, okay? Because uh, why don't you find out what 45 micrograms of car fentanyl will do, okay? Here's a hint. You'll fucking drop dead from 45 micrograms of car fentanyl. So it kind of depends on what the substance is. You can't just say, oh, it's micrograms, so it's harmless. In this case, yeah, it's harmless because it's a B vitamin and it's water soluble. You could take like seven bazillion percent of it and you'd be fine. You would just have very, very a yellow pea gram or whatever. So we're talking about a, a very small amount. These percentages, your your um, uh, the the percentage, your daily value. Uh, those are set basically to what your body needs to not die. It, it, they're set to uh, like what will you need at least this so that you don't have scurvy. So scurvy is caused by a lack of vitamin C, not by v B vitamins. And the daily value is how much your body needs, period. It doesn't need any more. Getting something that says 100 percent aside from minerals, uh, but like in the vitamin world, if you're getting just a hundred percent, then you're probably, you could be getting optimal amounts that, that if you were getting more, um, but it, mainly what you'll see it in your B vitamins. Okay. Anyways, I don't want to hang out there. Um, <laughs> the, the ingredients I want to talk about, uh, it's got taurine, which helps with our metabolism. No, it doesn't. Um, L-tyrosine and inositol. Uh, inositol uh, is a, it's kind of a, it's a powder that, that used to be able to get it by itself, but they help not just with your mood. Why can't you get it anymore? Mood, but your serotonin release. Serotonin is your happy, feel good uh, hormone. <laughs> kind of. It, when, when people talk about these effects of, uh, and it's, it's not a hormone, it's a neurotransmitter, by the way. Um, when people talk about these neurotransmitters in these very simplistic ways, that's, that's usually a gross oversimplification. Like, people always say dopamine is the pleasure chemical. No, dopamine is not really a pleasure chemical. Dopamine is more of, it's, it's more of a signal of desire or of drive a restlessness it's it's wanting something or wanting to do something or feeling like dissatisfaction like you like you need to do something is more of what dopamine is and that that can be that can be very positive feeling or it can be very uh unpleasant feeling and same with serotonin. It, it's just not, it's not just your happy feel good. Like that's a very simplistic way of looking at it. That makes you not want to murder people. And so we like the serotonin, especially while driving. So, you know, like when you think, oh, I, um, I, what? I would say more of like anti-diuretic hormone and or oxytocin makes you not want to murder people, but. 
probably shouldn't have a rush before I, I drive or before I'm around people. So I'm not all crazy on them. Well, it's got some stuff to help you produce serotonin. This is these are good things. Um, uh, alpha alpha GPC uh, uh, glycerol phosphoryl <laughs> choline. Uh, you know, I'm not doing that for you. Alpha GPC. It's a nootropic. Um, um, it basically helps your neurotransmitters to connect. My neurotransmitters to connect. I don't think I need to explain why that's bullshit. Okay. Uh, goes through the blood brain barrier. Uh, so basically your neurotransmitters looks like this. They're these two like kind of caves and they shoot back and forth to one another. No. A neurotransmitter is a, is a chemical that is released by one neuron and then usually is received by another one. A, a neurotransmitter is not like a it's not a satellite dish okay it's it's a chemical like dopamine is a neurotransmitter serotonin is a neurotransmitter and that's how neuro uh that's how the transmission happens is they just shoot back and forth through here um as you age toxin oh no that's not how it works and that's not what the blood brain barrier is either all the things uh, will will make that start to the the things not shoot across properly the uh, your neurotransmissions uh, from from firing correctly and all the neurons. They Are you listening to this shit? Won't go where they need to go. So um, having some of these new topics, they help with that. They help encourage better communication in your brain, uh, which makes yeah, they help the things shoot across better. Makes you feel focused, dialed in, locked in. Uh, the cobwebs kicked out of your head, the lights turned on, whatever, you know, analogy you want to use. Um, there's, uh, there's several ingredients like that to help. Uh, but COPA, we talked about that in, in, in uh, balance, of course, because everything's in the imbalance. Uh, it's that adaptogen herb. So again, helping your body to deal with stress, which is great. Um, <laughs> this is cool. It's a product called uh, Sintramin. If you've seen it on the back of the label, it's, it's uh, Sintramin. And I was like, what is Centramin? Basically, it's 75 collodial trace minerals. So your trace minerals are minerals that you don't need a lot of, hence the name trace minerals. Um, but you need them in your body. We don't get them. We used to get them from spring water and you know drinking out of a well and all of that. Um, uh, fresh vegetables that came out of the healthy, unravaged ground you know we used to get trace minerals in our food and water all the time now we don't get them as much um so being in here it, it'll help you with well luckily you only need them in traces <laughs> also sir are you all right hydration it'll help how you feel it'll help all the other stuff work better um it also has a negative ionic charge which is weird that that I mean, that's like a next level thing to do to trace minerals is to um, have them go through a process where they have a negative ionic charge. Again, what that does. Jesus Christ. OK, I mean, a lot of things have a negative charge. I... <laughs> what the fuck, man? I... Any ionic solid like uh, table salt that the chloride in salt has a negative charge. Actually, anything that ends in "-ide", has a negative charge. So I guess that means it's fucking magic. So I guess. Uh, maybe you should start using your fucking fluoridated toothpaste again. Because I bet he doesn't use it. Non-fluoridated toothpaste does not prevent dental caries. It, it doesn't. It does not. It has no effect on dental caries. It, uh, y uh, Non-fluoridated toothpaste has no protective effect against dental caries.
for your body um, is it just it helps with the inflammation. It helps with um, uh, all of the all of the ways that your body needs to function. Jeez, dude, how do you have any inflammation left then? Um, in that negative charge. Anyways, I don't want to stay there. Uh, and then it has caffeine. Of course, we love caffeine. Woo! Caffeine, though, and and. And here's where some people be like, oh, but it doesn't have caffeine. I don't want to do caffeine. Let me help explain caffeine. Caffeine is a train. Okay. Just imagine a big train and all the cars that, that are behind the engine of the train are all of these ingredients that I just talked about. All the neurotropics, all of the um, hydration, all the energy uh, ingredients, all the vitamins and minerals, they're all in the car. So caffeine is just a train. It just shoots them where they need to go a lot faster. So. That's not how caffeine works. Caffeine works because it's a it's an it's a an antagonist at your adenosine receptors. That's it. And the adenosine receptors are occupied by adenosine, then you tend you are going to feel more tired, you're going to feel um, sleepier, you will have an easy time falling asleep. Uh, and caffeine binds that receptor and makes it so that the adenosine cannot get in because it's blocked by caffeine, which means you will not feel as sleepy. You will feel more awake. That's it. That's all caffeine does. It, it's, it's not a train helping things shoot across real fast. See that the, 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 association of caffeine with sort of fast and stuff that is a that's your subjective experience of caffeine that's not what's literally happening on the molecular level there's something happening there that makes you feel subjectively energized but that doesn't have anything to do with like molecules moving faster when you drink it that's why you know when you have that little bit of a rush um, it's not just the fact that, oh, my heart is beating faster. It's all of that good nutrition is getting where it needs to go quickly. No, that is utter gibberish. So again, you could drink an energy drink and push sugar all through your body really quickly. Or you could have a sugar-free one, babe. Or you could have coffee. You could have black coffee or tea. And then, and then, and then you would get the balance and the rush. And uh, we all know how we feel after that. Or you can drink um, a rush that has all of this good stuff. And when it shoots it to where it needs to go quickly, we feel it quicker. Our lights are turned on quicker. We're, we're focused quicker. We're, we're starting our day off quicker. You're probably going to crash quicker. And our mood is a little better because of the serotonin. So we don't kill anybody. So, all right, those are the four products that I wanted to go over with you guys. I know it was kind of drinking from the fire hose. Um, I hope you wrote some of the stuff down. But what I want to say really quickly um, before I just uh, turn it back over is how you talk about these products. Um, know some of this stuff, not all of this stuff. All of this stuff is only good for people like me that nerd out on it and, and people that you may have friends that want to nerd out on this stuff because we find it fascinating. 99 Think about all the information, like real information that he could have learned instead of learning all of this made up garbage. Also, the irony of this man telling us how to talk about the product that that was a disaster sir just in terms of the presentation in terms of how you presented it that was so weird and disturbing like it really made it seem like the product was not doing great things for you nine percent of people don't find it fascinating isn't it funny i chose two professions that most people don't want to talk about or hear about uh, jesus and nutrition like it's just i don't know uh, i'm a glutton for punishment but um i you know i, I like i said i kind of nerd out about it um and so it's easy for me to get excited about this stuff but again it's more about bravely balanced it's got nine different groups of of powerful foods that help your body feel good, feel amazing. And you're getting all of those key nutritions in whole food form to help your body uh, feel balanced. And you're not getting it in whole food form. You are getting it as a powder, a powder.
powder is not a whole food. A whole food is like an apple. And so that's where that great presentation wraps up. So um, I got to say, I did not find that super convincing. Um, And then, see, I went, I looked in this book. I heard this book is important to Christianity. Um, And I was looking to see if there was anything in here um, about Bravenly. Um, But all that I could find was, uh, it says here, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. So that seems kind of like... I don't know. It didn't seem super supportive of this concept. Uh, Oh, and then there's this other passage in here. I couldn't find anything about making a fortune on, on, on Bravenly, but it does say, um, it says, it says right here, a fortune made by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor and a deadly snare. Your move, Bravenly. I've been Mac. Peace out. Bye!